Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Survival Kit for Beginner Developers. My name is Attila Wolf. I'm a Salesforce developer at Verbo Technologies. And I'm really he happy to be here today with you and give you a few tips and tricks, uh, things that I wish I, kn I knew when I was starting out so we can jumpstart your, your developer journey. So um, let's see what we're going to talk about today. First up, um, there are lots of situations when it's better not to use code, actually, and still be a developer. Uh, we are going to talk about those uh, for a minute there. Uh, then I'm going to give you some tips on what tools you, ca you could use and what tools you'll need, how to choose your, uh, those tools uh, to be a successful and efficient developer. And last but not least, of course, we are going to have a uh, demo. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to to get into development and combine the declarative and programmatic uh, elements within Salesforce. So um, let's get started. When not to use code. And I want you to remember just this one question. So when you are faced with a task, when, when you need to solve a problem, uh, always ask yourself this question. Can I solve this with clicks? Um, if the answer is yes, Probably it's, the, it's best to do it with clicks. I come from a developer background. Um, and I know that as a developer, it's very easy to just conclude, OK, I can write code for this and just start coding uh, without thinking about it. Salesforce has lots of great declarative capabilities um, that let you do it easily with clicks. And there are a few reasons why you should do this. So first of all, they're going to be really efficient and easily maintainable. Salesforce already wrote this code for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can trust that it's going to be great uh, when you do this with clicks. You also don't need to write any unit tests, which is great. Um, from personal experience, uh, I did uh, code-based applications a lot where the, unit, the writing the unit tests actually took more time than writing the actual application. So you don't have to worry about that when you do it with clicks. Uh, and of course, you don't have to worry about uh, governor, uh, uh, governor limits as well. Um, Salesforce limits the amount of queries you can do. Uh, they uh, limit how much resources you can use with your code. When you do it with the declarative tools or clicks, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the awesome thing about declarative capabilities is Salesforce is constantly developing them. And tasks that might not have been possible before with clicks now there are. So here are just a few examples, as you can see on the screen. One of my favorites is that now you can update the child records of any record with Process Builder. So if you want to have want to update all of the contacts belonging to an account, uh, you can do that with, with Process Builder now with only clicks. You don't need to code for that. OK, uh, so that's it for clicks. Uh, let's talk about what kind of tools you will need if you do need to code, if you want to get into development. Um, this might seem simple, but use two screens, if you have access to two screens. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of people start out with development and just the usual one screen. It really helps to have the real estate. Just use one screen for your code and one screen for testing, at least. It's going to save you a lot of time. OK. Uh, you're going to need a browser. Um, Google Chrome is your best bet as a developer. Chrome has lots of great developer tools built in out of the box, um, and also tons of extensions available, tons of great extensions specifically designed for sales, Salesforce development. So if you are getting into Lightning development at some point, for example, Lightning Inspector is invaluable. It's just a great, great tool, and it runs in Chrome. So just use Chrome. All right, the most important one of all, you need to choose an IDE, uh, an integrated development environment. And this is going to be your command center as a developer. Um, and my personal preference is I like to have uh, most of the uh, tools that I need inside my IDE. So I'm going to give you a few tips on, on what features to look for. Uh, the most important ones are on this slide. 
Um, so code completion is really, uh, it's just really basic functionality, but you really need it. And there are actually IDEs out there that don't support it as well as others. So you're going to be typing opportunity a lot, right, when you, when you develop. So if it doesn't complete that for you, don't go with that one. Um, then you're going to want to have a log viewer inside. Well, not that kind of logs, but uh, you get the idea. So when your code is actually running on Salesforce, you're going to want to have to uh, want to retrieve those log files and view them in your IDE so you don't have to go to the developer console for those. Uh, it's really great if your IDE can retrieve those for you. You are going to be using version control um, if you're developing, especially if you're developing in a team. Uh, GitHub is just an example. But your IDE should have version control integration built in. Anonymous Apex and SOQL execution, tremendously useful. So that's just something that you really need. You can execute anonymous code or retrieve data via SOQL really quickly within your IDE, test out your code, uh, see what data changes you made. Just be careful when running anonymous Apex on your production environment. And most, in most cases, don't do that. But when you, if you do need to do that, be careful. Okay. And last but not least, I already mentioned testing. So you are required by Salesforce to uh, to have 75% of your code at a minimum covered with your unit tests. And you're going to have to write those unit tests, run those unit tests. It's really great if you have that capability in your IDE. Again, you don't have to go to the developer console for that. Uh, the, the best IDEs out there will actually show you the code coverage in, in your code edit window. And you can run the tests. You can evaluate the results in there. There are a couple of other features that I, that I put on this slide, uh, but the most important ones are these ones. Uh, the choice is up to you. I am going to give you one recommendation. So I personally use uh, IntelliJ IDEA with the Illuminated Cloud plugin. Scott Wells really did a great job uh, with, with Illuminated Cloud. It has all these features and more. It's constantly being developed. I personally have been using it for two years now, and it's great. OK. So you've got your tools. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see uh, a real life example of what you could do really easily when you're getting started. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, give you this so small sample task. Um, we are going to have this challenge to lock records. When we, when we uncheck an active checkbox on our account object, we want to lock that account and all related opportunities from editing. So first things first, can I do this with clicks? Right? Uh, we, we talked about it earlier. You need to evaluate that. Now, today, you cannot do this, at least not this exact functionality. The locking I'm referring to is similar to what approval processes have. But we want to do this without any approval processes. And we just want to lock the record from editing. And we want the capability to unlock records with an with a system admin right uh, on a per record basis if needed. So that we cannot do with clicks yet. So we're going to have to do some code. OK, so this is my personal favorite dream team as, as of uh, today, the Process Builder plus Apex. So Process Builder is this declarative click-based tool that, that uh, Salesforce had for some, uh, some quite some time now. It's constantly being developed. And the cool thing about it is that if it cannot do something, it has the capability to just call an Apex method, call on your code, and do that part that way. So this way, you can combine uh, the declarative and programmatic capabilities uh, with great efficiency. So that's what we are going to do. OK, so let's jump to the demo now. I'm just going to. Exit this. OK, so here we are in Process Builder. I pre-built some of the process for you. So we are going to do this on the account object uh, when it's created or edited. Uh, we are going to check if that checkbox that I mentioned active is unchecked. So we have this is active checkbox on the account object. If it's false, then we are going to enter our process. Let's go ahead and add that action together. 
So this is where we want to lock the records, right? If the account is inactive, we want to do locking. The process builder cannot do that. So the action that we are going to select is, uh, is going to be Apex. Uh, we're going to just uh, name this action lock records. And we need to find an Apex class that can do this. Obviously, we have this pre-built, but I'm going to show you the code in a minute. So we're going to select our Apex class. It's expecting, expecting some parameters. So we want to give the account that started the process to the Apex so it knows which records to lock. So we are going to find a parameter in our Apex uh, method, our account, account IDs. We are going to select field reference. And let's go ahead and find that account ID in this list. So here's our account ID. So with this simple a few clicks, I am telling my process to call on my Apex code and give it this account ID. Let's just save this and activate the process. OK, so now we need to go to the programmatic part, right? This is, this is what you need to, need to do on the development side. So we are here in our IDE. And as you can see, it's a very simple piece of code. I'm going to go through this um, line by line for you. Uh, so first up, we have this invocable method uh, part here. This is what exposes our class in Process Builder so that Process Builder can access it. Um, and then we have this account ID uh, input parameter in here. So you might remember this from Process Builder. This is how we wire the two together. This is how we are giving the account ID to the, to the, uh, to the Apex method. Uh, you might notice that it's a list. That is because Process Builder might process multiple accounts at once. We don't know. So we have, yeah, we have to be prepared for a list of account IDs coming in for our class. So we have our account IDs, and we want to lock those. Very simple, just one command, approval.lock. And we want to lock our account IDs list. So this will lock all the accounts uh, which, which accounts IDs are on that list. We also wanted to lock all opportunities related to that account, right? So we need to find those opportunities because Process Builder only gave us the account IDs. So we are going to find those opportunities by, by a, a very easy SOQA query. So we're going to select all the opportunity IDs where the account ID is in our list of account IDs. So any account ID that was in the list, find all the opportunities belonging to those accounts. And again, very simple, just lock all those related opportunities. Very, very simple. So this is, this is all the code that you need for this, except for testing. So the length of this session doesn't allow me to show you the test class that, that I built for this. But I, am, uh, I actually uploaded this uh, as an unmanaged package uh, that you can download later on and play around with it. Uh, and that has the test class in, in it. So you can, you can take a look at the test class as well. So let's go ahead and, and see what this does, right? Uh, let's go back to our Chrome uh, browser. And let's go to a sample account. Um, so I am going to, whoops, this wasn't activated. So just going to simulate the active checkbox here. OK. So now, whoopsie. So now we have this account active right here. And when I'm going to uncheck this, uh, uncheck this checkbox here and save this account, you can see that it's now locked. Okay, So we have this little lock icon right here. And since I am a system administrator uh, with this profile, I can unlock the record on a per record basis. But any other user with any other profile would not be able to edit this. They would see this lock sign, and it's locked for, for, from editing. Let's take a look at the opportunities. So we have a few opportunities that are related to this account. I'm just going to click on one of those. And you can see that it's locked as well. So we locked the opportunity as well. So this is a very simple example, very simple use case. But it simulates well what kind of power you have with Process Builder and your Apex code and the connection between them. I encourage you to download the, uh, the package that I created with this example and just start playing around with the code uh, and, and the process builder, see what you can do. OK, uh, so let's jump back. And 
a few words on where to go next. Obviously, this was a really brief introduction into development. Um, so I'm sure you've heard about Trailhead a lot uh, on Dreamforce. I cannot recommend it enough. It's really an awesome tool. I use it every day. I've been a developer for four years now, and I still use Trailhead every day. Um, and especially the uh, developer beginner trail, it's a really great place to start. Uh, I tell everybody that I train on Salesforce development, start with the beginner developer trail. It's, it's the best way you can start. Uh, there are also a lot of great uh, developer log, uh, blogs on the internet. Um, ben McCarthy at Salesforce, Ben really did a great job in compiling a list of those blogs. So be sure to visit that and, and, and see a few uh, blogs out there. And also, we have a great, great developer community uh, uh, with Salesforce. So there's the developer forum, forums. You can go there. You can ask your questions. You can uh, ask for help from your fellow developers. You can get answers really quickly there. OK. Um, so we have a few minutes for questions, if you would like to ask me anything. Yeah. Uh, um, the question was my recommended ID. So it's IntelliJ IDEA with the Illuminated Cloud plugin. So IntelliJ is a, is a, a development environment for Java and other languages. But then the plugin Illuminated Cloud, that will, uh, that will enable the Salesforce-based capabilities. So you can connect to your orgs, deploy your code, uh, test uh, everything that I mentioned. Any other questions out there? Yeah, go ahead. So the, the best way to determine what you can and cannot do with clicks is always research into the newest features of Salesforce. Because Salesforce is constantly adding more functionality. Uh, I, what I do personally is always check the release, release notes for, uh, that Salesforce releases uh, with the uh, three yearly updates. Uh, you can find all the new capabilities in that. Um, and uh, generally, just go out there and, 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 and research what kind, of, what kind of capabilities there are. And if you don't find any, then you're going to need to have, uh, use code. Any other questions? I think Ohio, you need to start. No more questions? OK, I'll be here for a few minutes. Uh, so if you want to talk to me about anything, uh, I would be happy to share my experience uh, with you. So thank you. Thank you for joining, and uh, have a great Dreamforce, everybody.